Welcome. Can we at long last forget all this talk about a grand solar minimum? Perhaps not quite yet, but there's now more evidence that this is becoming increasingly unlikely. We just went through a period of 17 days without a single sunspot on the sun, and then we got a sunspot. Now it's a little hard to see in this picture, so I blew it up. This is an image from the SDO HMI instrument, and you can see we've got two little tiny spots there. So why am I so excited about two tiny spots on the sun after such a long period of quiet sun? Let me explain. Here we have an image of the sun's magnetic field over the last 40 years. Positive polarity here is indicated by yellow and negative polarity by blue. I've marked on here the last four solar cycles, solar cycle 21 through solar cycle 24, which is the current cycle. You will note that solar cycle 21 starts off with positive polarity leading in the northern hemisphere and negative polarity leading in the southern hemisphere. But when you get to the next cycle, that situation is reversed. You have negative polarity leading in the north and positive polarity leading in the south. This gives rise to the difference between the sunspot cycle, which is about 11 years, and the magnetic cycle, which is about 22 years. You'll note that each cycle starts with some regions at high latitudes, about 30 degrees north, and as the cycle progresses, those regions migrate towards the equator. Same is true in the southern hemisphere. Let's go back to what the sun looked like exactly three years ago. To orient you, north is at the top of these images, south at the bottom, east is to the left, and west is to the right. Now you can see immediately from this magnetic image that the sun is far more active than it is today. There was three or four sunspot regions on the sun at this time. But note the difference. In the southern hemisphere, the active region's positive polarity was leading. That's green in this image. And in the northern hemisphere, positive polarity was following. This is what the sun looks like today. As you can see, it's far less active than it was three years ago. And up in the northwest here, you can see our little sunspot region. The sunspot has actually decayed away, so this is now technically a plage region. But you can see that it's quite high up in latitude. And let's put a latitude grid on here and see how high this is. And it's about 26, 27 degrees north, which is very close to the regions where you would expect new cycle regions to appear. So what we have here is a reverse polarity region at high latitudes, which is exactly what you'd expect at the onset of the next cycle. If this is indeed the case, there should be more of these regions developing they will last longer and become larger. They slowly start to migrate towards the equator as solar cycle 25 develops. Here we have the history of solar cycle 24 as expressed in sunspot number and archived by the Solar Influences Data Center in Belgium. You can see that they have two different models of the solar cycle and you can see the results of those in the bottom right here. One has an early onset of solar cycle 25. The other one has a long low solar minimum. Uh, that's the one I've been favoring to date, though I'm far less certain about that as a result of the appearance of this high latitude reverse polarity region two days ago. Now the rule of thumb in solar physics is that the shorter the solar cycle, the more likely the next cycle will be larger. And if this early onset model is correct, then solar cycle 24 would have only lasted 10 years. So let's see what that would predict in terms of the upcoming solar cycle 25. So what have I plotted here? On the bottom axis, the x-axis, I've plotted the length of a solar cycle. And on the y-axis, I've plotted the maximum sunspot number for the following cycle. So for example, this is the length of solar cycle number one, which was just over 11 years, compared with the intensity of solar cycle two, which was about 190. For this set of plots, I've done a correlation plot. And you can see that is the black dots across the uh, page here. So what would this model predict that solar cycle 25 would be like? So if we have a 10 year solar cycle 24, that would say that solar cycle 25 is likely to be maximum solar sunspot number of 220 with an uncertainty of about plus or minus 70. And that compares with solar cycle 24 of being 116. So that would represent a major increase in the level of solar activity over solar cycle 24. Now, even if solar cycle 24 went on for another year and it became an 11 year cycle, that would predict that solar cycle 25 would be 180 plus or minus 50, still much larger than solar cycle 24. And if that's the case, you can throw all ideas of a grand solar minimum out the window and all the accompanying possibility of global cooling, mini ice ages and the other sorts of things that have come along with it. So what can we conclude from all of this? 
We got a sunspot region in the last few days, but it was a reverse polarity and high latitude, which means it could be part of the onset of solar cycle 25. That would imply that we have a short cycle for solar cycle 24, which means the solar cycle 25 will likely be much more active than solar cycle 24. If so, no grand solar minimum, no global cooling, and no mini ice age. And so if you see somebody posting this sort of nonsense on uh, YouTube, please post a link to this video and tell them they're full of nonsense. Until next time, goodbye.